Hi folks, it's uh, Tim G5TM. Nice to have you back with me again. Now, lots of people, uh, for various reasons, maybe when they're operating portable or in a fairly small garden, will put up a, a single wire vertical, just one wire going up a pole, and uh, try to get use of a few bands out of that wire. Now, they might have a nine to one or a four to one and none at the base, maybe even a tuner, a remote tuner at the base as well. Uh, so they'll try to these various methods to try and get as many bands as they can out of a single wire. Of course, one of the many benefits of having a vertical antenna, apart from saving a lot of space, horizontally anyway, is the fact that you often get quite low angles of radiation. So when you put up a vertical antenna, you expect to, uh, at home or portable, uh, you expect to be able to get some quite low angles of radiation out of that antenna. Now, it can be a challenge to do that across many bands. By many bands, let's typically look at 40 meters up to 10 meters and see what the challenges are. What I thought I'd do is compare two typical installations. So we're looking at a wire, a vertical antenna, which is about 21 feet high, or 21 feet long, going up a bowl. Uh, that's about, what, six and a half meters or something like that. And another one, which is 31 feet long, which is around nine and a half meters or so in length. So let's look at those two and see how they both play out in terms of 40 meters up to 10 meters. And I thought I'd do quite a, a similar sort of setup for both these antennas. Let's have a look at this together on the slide here. So we can see then we're looking at two vertical antennas. Both of them are ground mounted. One is 21 foot long, as I said, one is 31 foot long. They're both fed in this case with a nine to one unun. Both will have 25 feet of RG58 coax running from the unun into the shack into a uh, either an auto or some sort of external manual ATU in the shack, okay? Um, both uh, antennas will have 12 quarter wave radials modeled uh, for both antennas, uh, for the various bands that we're looking at. So uh, that'll be down as well. And we're looking at MMANA, uh, Mamanagal software for both these antennas. So we're relying on modeling here to see what the differences are. Uh, I've also looked at another system as well, which provides information regarding feed line loss, and that'll be a very critical part of this as well. So let's have a look. So first of all, let's look at 40 meters. And what's, in, what's interesting is it doesn't really matter whether the antenna is 21 feet uh, long or 31 feet long as a vertical. The far field plot is basically the same. So I've used the modeling software to have a look at that. So let's have a look. And uh, we can see that uh, the 21 foot vertical on the left, the 31 foot vertical on the right on 40 meters have basically identical far field plots. Um, both have very similar gain figures at five degrees off the horizon, around minus six dB for the pair, which is, uh, which you know, is pretty typical for an antenna which is uh, you know, ground mounted like this. So so far so good then on forty meters. Uh, let's look next then at uh, well a different thing, and what we're looking at here is the effect of the feed line and the reactance that we see differently between these two antennas. So the twenty-one foot vertical on the left. At the feed point, we've got a very high reactance, an estimate of around 200 to 1 at 21 feet. Now, even when we have a 25 foot run of RG58 into the shack, the tuner is still seeing quite a high SWR and quite a high reactance still. And in fact, even though we can get a tune there, uh, we've got a reflected loss of 8.4 dB. Now, uh, as you see there, what that effectively means is initially, if you're, say you're running at a 100 watt station, uh, you're effectively radiating initially around 13 of those 100 watts. So as we can see there, quite a substantial loss in terms of the uh, the mismatch we have and in terms of the, the further loss we'll get on that run of coax as well. But even if you have a tuner at the feed point, it's going to find a very tough time to, to get an effective match here on 40 metres. There'll be a lot of heat generated and uh, won't be the most efficient antenna in the world at all. Let's look back at the other one now on the screen, which is the 31 foot version. Now we've got a much lower reactance and don't forget we're just a, just a fraction under a quarter wavelength now on 40. So we should see uh, quite an effective antenna here. Uh, following 25 foot run of RG58, the same run as the other one. Uh, SWR uh, is, is reduced slightly. You've got a reflected loss of just 0.7 of a dB. Uh, so clearly then on, on 40 meters, 
a 31 foot vertical will do a lot better than a 21 foot vertical. Uh, it's got far less reactance, it's far nearer a quarter wave vertical. And we can see back on the screen here, look, we're radiating initially 84 out of our, out of our 100 watts. So uh, we're effectively losing something less than than a dB. Of course, we haven't factored in here one thing, which is any uh, heat dissipation in the 9 to 1 unknown itself on the tuner. But uh, clearly, there's enough of a contrast here between 21 and, and 31 feet in terms of the, of the uh, situation regarding uh, losses there. So there we go. So uh, that's 40 meters. And if we look at 10 meters, which is the other uh, system, uh, the other band we're looking at here. And uh, well, there's a slight uh, improvement seemingly uh, there as well between 21 and 31 feet. Uh, going down to the bottom of the 21 foot vertical on the left hand side there, we can see that we've got a reflected loss of 5 dB, which is improved on the right hand side for the 31 foot vertical in this situation, the nine to one and under 25 feet of RG58. Uh, we've got a slightly better situation there. We've lost three and a half dB. You know, not an amazing, uh, not an amazing set of results, but we're radiating just about half our power. So um, seemingly we've got a reasonable, a reasonable situation. But in the, even here, we can see that ten meters um, still isn't doing fantastically well at thirty-one feet because we're near a full wavelength now on ten meters. But overall, maybe we see 31 feet as being a reasonable sort of um, a reasonable sort of compromise here, do we? Well, actually, it's not even as good as it seems because uh, for 10 meters, we haven't looked at one other thing, of course, uh, which is the far field plot. And if we go back to this again, then we have some more issues because when we run a vertical antenna, what we want to try to do, of course, is get as, as low an angle of radiation as we can to work some DX. That's one of the uh, well, uh, the stated benefits of having a vertical antenna. And we can see there, look on the left hand side, at, at 21 feet long, uh, we've got some nice low angle DX, a nice low angle of radiation, and a typically good looking vertical antenna there. But when we go to 31 feet, suddenly the antenna has become a much longer uh, to a wavelength on 10 meters, and suddenly we're seeing much higher lobes and uh, far less gain on an angle such as maybe five degrees off the horizon where lots of DX occurs. And if you remember back in a previous video when I ran an N-fed half wave uh, for 20 meters, which was obviously tuned or matched up as a full wave on 10, we saw those high angles, those high lobe angles occurring there. And that's similar on 31 feet. Doesn't mean to say you won't work any DX, mine, because I did cross the states on that antenna on 10 meters. And when 10 meters is open, 10 meters is open. But we can see there, going back to the diagram, that we've got far less of a of a gain at lower angle of radiation on 31 feet compared to 21 feet. And this is the issue we've got when we try to use one antenna across several bands. There's going to be lots of trade-offs and compromises, okay? And one of those key compromises is on um, radiation patterns and take off angles, even on vertical antennas. And here, as we can see, is a prime example. Um, and in fact, if we try to adjust the length of that antenna to try to find a better sort of uh, take off angle or better sort of radiation pattern, I should say, on 10 meters, we can see there are some things that we can try to do. Now here, I've compared uh, the 21 foot, the 27 foot and 25 foot lengths to see whether we can get any joy. Uh, the blue one is the 21 foot uh, vertical on 10 meters this is and we can see that's pretty decent um the red one is the 27 foot one and we can see uh, as we get uh, up to 27 feet or more we can see that red pattern on the right hand side there the lower angles are shrinking back in terms of gain now at 25 feet which is the black line that's not too bad that's much nearer the performance of the 21 foot vertical at those low angles of radiation so maybe 25 feet might be a reasonable length and probably the very edge of, of length on, on 10 meters. And 25 feet is about seven and a half meters long for those working in metric, by the way. Um, so it's the very edge, isn't it, before we start seeing those, those higher lobes occurring on 10 meters in terms of it being a vertical. So if 25 feet at seven and a half meters is an improvement on 10, Cross our fingers, what's it like on 40? Well, let's, let's have a look here. And well, there is still in the setup we've got here a four and a half dB loss on 40 meters when we get to the shack tuner. So we're still seeing a lot of reactants and a lot of 
of wasted energy, if you like, because the antenna is still comparatively short on 40 metres. Um, 27 feet and 29 feet, before we get up to 31 feet, we're seeing an improvement uh, to one, just a 1.5 dB loss effectively on 29 feet. But as we've seen already, once we get above 25 feet in length on 10 metres, we're seeing those higher lobes again, aren't we? So that low angle of radiation, that gain we get at five degrees off the horizon, starts to become far less once you get to 27 feet. So it's a real balancing act. When you've got a single wire vertical and you want to cover 40 through 10, it becomes much, much more difficult to do so and maintain the DX properties, if you like, that you want to see across all those four bands and to avoid losing a lot of your RF in terms of reactants and in terms of the uh, the lost energy you see on the feed line because your antenna is uh, possibly too short on 40 meters. So then, if you're thinking of putting up one wire to cover bands from say 40 through till 10, so we're going basically from a ratio of four to one, if you like, from the lowest band to the highest band, then there are some things you need to consider in that situation. So firstly, I would say in reality, a ratio of more than two or two and a half to one from the lowest to the highest band is a challenging one to achieve when you're trying to get gain or low angles of gain across all your intended bands, if you're just using one single wire. Uh, therefore, the second point I'd make there is that say a 31 foot ground mounted vertical, for example, uh, with a good radial system provides low angles of gain from probably 15 to 40 meters. It's very tough ask to get 12 and 10 meters, especially to have that gain at say five or 10 degrees off the horizon as we've seen. And the final thing to consider is that a single wire vertical has to be at least 20% of a wave, sorry, wavelength long even on its lowest intended band in order to effectively uh, come over the, uh, the efficiency issues that you'll get through reactants. So for example, for 40 meters, you want this antenna to be probably around 26 or 27 feet long to start to really become an antenna that will start to function pretty well and minimize some of the losses you'll find through reactants. And that's even the case if, by the way, if you just match it straight at the feed point by a remote ATU, you're still putting strain on that system and you'll still uh, dissipate some heat there too. So overall then, it's difficult, isn't it, to get a uh, the same behaviour, if you like, off a vertical across bands of a sort of four to one in ratio. Uh, in effect, really, you can still work some DX, by the way, uh, no problems at all. If the band of 10 and 12 are open, you'll still work DX on those particular bands. Um, but your uh, ability to do so under sort of less favourable conditions, if you like, uh, will become more of a challenge to you. Uh, because really we're looking at a ratio of around, as I say, two to two and a half to one. Once you start to stretch it further than that in terms of uh, from lowest to highest bands, then you're going to have to make some compromises somewhere, either on the lowest band in terms of uh, losses and reactants to keep the higher bands happy by having a smaller antenna, or on the higher bands by trying to get a better performance on the lower band, like 40 metres, for example, but having higher angles of, uh, of gain effective gain really in terms of bands such as 10 and 12. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and hope to catch you again and 7.3 and click subscribe if you fancy seeing some more. Take care now and stay safe. Bye-bye.